Fairy tale characters, advanced technology, and culture in all its myriad manifestations. A voyage of discovery through an enchanting land, led by Thor, the Germanic god of thunder, alighting from the heavens to carry out his quest. Carnival Sunday in Rio de Janeiro. Under the slogan, Alemania Encantada, Magical Germany, Brazil's hippest samba school is snicking its way through the Sambodromo, turning Rio's famous carnival arena into a riot of German culture. Beethoven's symphonies, the Brothers Grimm's fairy tales, the invention of the Zeppelin airship, or Black Forest Gato. Perfect. They really show German culture in its best light. We like German beer, and we're bringing the samba and the gaiety. German carnival, Brazilian carnival, it's the best in the world. The Unidos de Tajuca Samba School, which takes its name from its home district, is defending its title in this great carnival competition. Paulo Barros is the creative brain behind the display. He is the Carnavalesco, the school's celebrated carnival head. 75,000 people have turned up to watch his Germany parade. The procession through the Sambo Dromo is both the high point and the end of a long road. It all got its start with an idea from the Goethe Institute. In April 2012, Paolo Barros and a team from the Unidos de Tejuca Samba School paid a visit to Germany. The first stop was the Rhine River, a river and region steeped in ancient German legend and folklore. The group is here at the invitation of the Goethe Institute's division in Rio. They came up with the idea as part of the Year of Germany celebration that's set to kick off in Brazil later this spring. The Unidos da Tejuca Samba School was the winner of last year's carnival parade. They're intrigued by the idea and are here on a fact-finding mission. When we pay a visit like this, we get very deeply involved in the topic we're exploring. We already start creating designs in our heads. We absorb the atmosphere and the details and remember them. Then we transform that into art, in this case, the art of the carnival. A visit to the Carnival Museum in Cologne shows the visitors from Brazil how the Rhineland celebrates the carnival season. The tour of the floats brings with it a few surprises. In Germany, Carnival has a strong element of social criticism, a bit different than in Brazil. And the floats here are equipped for every eventuality. And we have toilets inside because it's so, such a long time, four hours, we're going for four hours. But the biggest difference is in size. The Rio Carnival is much bigger. Our floats are up to 12 meters long. Here the streets are narrow, so the floats have to be narrow and smaller too. We don't have any of those limits. Next up, Berlin. The Brazilians have a week in Germany, a week to explore as much of the country, its culture and its people as possible. And all of that will serve as inspiration for Brazil's most popular street parade. They're also getting a taste of high culture, a visit to the opera in Berlin. The Goethe Institute originally suggested Richard Wagner's Ring Opera as a theme for the Samba School. That's why they're attending a performance of Lohengrin. The 
The set, costumes, lighting, it's all very dramatic. We'll have to do it a bit differently at the carnival, of course. Even if we do incorporate some elements, our carnival is a cheerful event after all. It may be cheerful, but it's not cheap. Carnival in Brazil is big business. As the floats grow ever more elaborate, the cost for material, technology and staff rise as well. The marketing team estimates the Sambodrome parade will cost about 5 million euros. About half of that will come from admission tickets, broadcast rights and government funding. For the rest, the school needs sponsors, especially among German companies that do business in Brazil. They've started the search already. There's no time to spare. We start researching the topic for the next year as soon as Carnival is over. We develop ideas, draw sketches and build models. All of that costs money, of course, and we also have fixed costs for materials. So if the sponsors aren't in place, the entire project suffers. For the evening's entertainment, they pay a visit to the renowned Berlin dance hall Kleerschen's Ballhaus for dinner accompanied by ballroom dancing. Back in Rio, the Harbor District is home to Samba City. In this huge complex, Rio's 12 best samba schools each have a large building where they make everything they'll need for the carnival show. Unidos de Tijuca is here too. Right now, it's early November, six months after the visit to Germany. Almost 200 people are working full-time preparing for the big parade. First up, some fairy wings. Some trees are also being brought to life, a tribute to the forests of Teutonic legends and fairy tales. A VW Beetle is being carved out of styrofoam. Later, they'll cast a replica that will be painted and decorated. That same process will turn this frame into a beer wagon, complete with beer taps and barrels. The base of the float is a converted bus, topped now by a massive iron frame. Hesio Paim is master of the craft. He's been building carnival floats for 30 years now. Paim is responsible for overseeing all six of the massive floats. One will depict the enchanted forest. The final result will be 20 meters long and 7 meters high. With the engine and all the mechanical parts, it will weigh 20 tons. This float will include the dwarves and all the other forest animals. It will hold about 100 people. And there are also four large sculptures that represent mythical creatures. This will be the nicest float of them all. Some 25 dwarfs will decorate the float, all cast out of fiberglass and painted by hand. Each float will be built according to a design that's been mapped out down to the smallest detail. But even Pime doesn't know every detail of the overall concept. The most inventive elements won't be unveiled until the big event itself. I build the floats. The creative director keeps some details a secret until the parade. The surprise is a major part of the effect. He knows it all. I just know 90%. This is the big boss. Paulo Barros, currently the most successful carnavalesco in Brazil. He's already designed two winning Sambadrome performances for the school in the past three years. A former flight attendant, Barros is now on a mission to put a lasting mark on the carnival. 
He's known for picking unusual themes for his choreography. He puts a lot of research into this year's theme, but the final product is to be much more than a simple factual account. A samba school's parade is art, a form of visual art. It should be a feast for the eyes. If we focus too much on the details and neglect the visual element, then we've missed the point. My main focus is what will delight the eye, what the audience will see. Barros keeps close tabs on production. Right now, everything is running on schedule. His team is a mix of pros who work year-round and temporary staff who are here only for the high season. Barros is making sure that the wood cladding for the floats will be finished next week. In another corner of the workshop, this year's most ornate and, at 40 kilos, heaviest costumes are being made. They'll be worn by the Baianas, about 200 women who are the matrons of the Samba school. This year's outfit is inspired by the warlike maidens of Nordic mythology, the Valkyries. The costumes draw upon the various aspects of German culture. We've divided the theme of Germany into five main sections. The Valkyries belong to the first section, which is about mythology, just like the dwarves. The second section is about the arts. The third section is the universe of children, which has toys and fairy tales. The fourth is about inventions. And the fifth is about black forest cake and pork. Conheiro is a professional dancer and also teaches at Rio's College of the Arts. But her main job is the carnival. It's where she can give her creativity free reign. She's designed more than 70 costumes for the upcoming show. Every detail has been carefully researched. One group of samba dancers will depict the legend of the Pied Piper of Hamelin. Where does the Pied Piper outfit come from? And from when? How do we adapt that to the carnival? We've shortened it a bit. In a samba costume, you want to show the midriff and legs. But the overall concept is still the mice, which follow the sound of the flute. And we have open sleeves the way they did back then. The brocade for the Pied Piper costumes is being cut in another workshop. There will be 200 outfits, half of them for women and half for men. The rhinestones are glued on by hand, piece by piece. Ana Filipe Soromeno is also a samba dancer and will wear one of these costumes herself. It'll be worth about 300 euros and will be decorated with small pearls, rhinestones, little mice made out of rubber and ostrich feathers. I'm getting a chance to see the greatest show in the world from the inside. I love the carnival, and now I'm even working here. I get to see how it all grows. It's wonderful. One of the key members of the Samba School works as a taxi driver most of the year. Luis Calisto Montiero, who also goes by Casa Grande, is leader of the percussion group. Now, two months before the start of the carnival season, he's got his hands full. Carnival is my passion. I earn a little bit of money from it. But it's not enough to earn a living, so I have to keep driving a taxi. The Borel Favela. Until recently, the slum was known as one of the most dangerous places in Rio. Today, it's calmer here, but still poor. Many of the Unidos de Tajuca dancers are from Borel, including Casa Grande. He doesn't live in the favela any longer, but he's still a familiar figure here. Hey, you got a jersey for me? 
But yeah, but I think about, 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 yes, but remind me later. I'll give it to Pedro. We're coming to the show on Saturday. I'll give you 50 jerseys to support you guys, okay? Back in his old neighborhood, Casa Grande is a welcome visitor, a man of influence and success. This was once Unidas de Tajuja's old school building. They had rehearsals and shows in the hall, and it was also a meeting point for the neighborhood. The Tejuca school still takes pride in its history. The Samba school was founded in the district almost 80 years ago. Samba helped us make something of our lives. I'm from the favela, just like the others here. We could have turned into drug dealers or addicts, but there are a lot of people in the favela who are hard workers. Samba helped me get out of Borel, and today I'm a role model for the people here. In late November, the school has its first rehearsal in the Sambo Dromo. There are about 300 members in the percussion group. Casa Grande gets them all in sync. Then the dancers join in. They're practicing this year's carnival song. A homage to Germany and their samba school. Casa Grande's goal for tonight's rehearsal is coordinating the samba dancing with the singing and the rhythm. The percussion troupe has a very important role in the samba school. It leads the parade and everyone dances and sings to their rhythm. The rhythm and beat are the heart of the parade. That's why the percussion troupe is also called the heart of the samba school. Ana Filipe Soromeno is also dancing tonight. With only two months before the big day, rehearsals are mandatory. Assistants help everyone find their position and the beat. It's very important that all the dancers stick together in formation and that everything flows. We Samba dancers tend to be a bit chaotic. We get so involved in what we're doing that we forget to concentrate. But we actually have rules we need to follow. At the actual competition, the school is allowed 82 minutes for the 700-meter parade through the stadium. Rio's carnival is not just a favela event any longer. Today, everyone wants to take part, even people who live in the elegant Copacabana district, like Ana Filipa Soromeno. She moved here from Portugal a year ago to fulfill her dream of taking part in the world's largest samba show. She's been dancing since she was a child. Being accepted to a renowned samba school here in the home of samba is a great honor. As carnival season approaches, her schedule gets busier and busier. Almost every evening there's a rehearsal or a show. For me, samba is the best part of the carnival. I've always enjoyed dressing up, but I really love putting on these fancy show costumes and really dolling myself up. It's Saturday night, and for Unidos de Tajuca, that means it's showtime in the big hall. Several guests of honor are in the audience tonight, including the German consul in Rio. And so is the man who runs the Brazilian subsidiary of a German company that produces medical supplies, Otto Philipp Braun. He's just agreed that his company will consider sponsoring the school at the parade, the first and only potential German sponsor thus far. A 
Although it's not apparent at first glance, the marketing team is under serious pressure to find sponsors. Tonight's show isn't part of the Germany-themed parade, but it's an important advertising event for the school and a way to win over sponsors. Carnival is a part of the Brazilian way of life, and using the Brazilian way of life to introduce people to German culture is an excellent idea. Back in the workshop just before Christmas, a group of children from the German school in Rio is here for a visit. All of the prototypes are done, and now it's full speed ahead with what will be 4,000 costumes in all. The work here is normally a secret, so these children are a lucky few. This is the first car ever built in Brazil. It originally came from Germany. And then the director himself gives them a few exclusive details. <laughs> the story behind our carnival parade is as follows. We go to Germany and the Nordic god Thor introduces us to everyone. In the end, we have a big celebration with a float we're building right now. It's dedicated to beer and everything that goes along with that. Chocolate is also an important part of his vision. The children are an enthusiastic audience and they like the Germany theme. I like the costume with the chocolate. In the costumes, I saw they were drawing on the grim fairy tales. That was great. The part with the chocolate was really cool. It's very German, chocolate and beer. That's German, and sausages and pork. They looked at all the important themes, and that's what they used. Late January, two weeks before the carnival season. The press has to stay outside. The final preparations are a secret. But every evening, there's a rehearsal in front of the big hall. All right, put it together. Tonight, it's the Black Forest Cake's turn. All right, first you need to straighten out and then move in. There's only one final rehearsal for the cakes left to come. The choreographer makes sure every move is perfect. The dancers are a specially chosen lot. You have to be tall enough for your head to stick out. We put on a red hat and that's the cherry. You can't take it too seriously. It's all supposed to be fun. We have to transform ourselves into a cake, and it's a delicious process. A delicious treat for the culinary section of the Germany parade. 80 pieces that will twirl their way into 10 black forest cakes in all. They're still burning the midnight oil in the marketing department, too. There still aren't enough sponsors. The marketing team says the German companies see Carnival as a big party and don't appreciate the artistic skill or the effort and expense that's involved. Volkswagen is just one of a few last-minute sponsors. A video won them over. A group of dancers dressed as chauffeurs build several VW Beetles as they march in the parade, a tribute to 60 years of VW production in Brazil. But most other German companies here are reluctant to come on board. We can't put on a small and shabby parade, something that's not exciting or innovative. To put on a grand show, we'll have to cut back here and there. But we're still going to carry a deficit into next year. 
Ten days before Carnival, and for the reigning champions, now there is only one thing that counts, defending their titles at the Samba Drone. The last public rehearsal in Central Rio turns into a big street celebration. There aren't any floats or costumes, but all 31 dance groups are here, showing what they're made of. A German tune to a Brazilian beat. The German consul is also here to do a bit of public relations work. Brazil and Germany go together, so the song goes. All Tijuca fans are singing for Germany. We Brazilians show what Germany has to offer. In my section, we're all going to be Mephistopheles, I heard. So we'll take Goethe and put him to a samba beat. Tijuca will win. We'll win with Germany. The big day is finally here, the carnival parade. Behind the scenes, the final preparations are underway. The pressure is on, but it's the moment Barros and 4,000 members of Tijuca have been waiting for. This moment is better than anything. It's just incredible. I've seen so many beautiful things already. I think we're going to win again. The percussion group under Casa Grande's leadership has always taken top marks in recent years. After 10 months, we're finally in the home stretch. Today, we need to show what we're made of. This is the trickiest moment, but we're very well prepared and we're going to put on a wonderful parade. Just before midnight, the fabulous voyage begins. The fairy tale forest is one of the main attractions, with flying mushrooms that hide small gnomes. A German legend that's known across Brazil, the VW Beetle, assembled right here on the parade route. For the Brazilian samba dancers, their dreams of appearing in the carnival are now a reality. And at the end, there's beer by the leader. After all, Germans who moved to Brazil have also made a name for themselves with their breweries. Casa Grande tells his troop to strike up a beat wearing the costumes of the Pied Piper of Hamelin. German specialties to a Brazilian beat. The Germany parade is a play of cliches and contrasts. Samba meets sauerkraut. A delicious treat at the world's largest carnival parade.